Canada, and we are still learning what this country is capable of. When the pandemic hit, life changed in an instant. Go home and stay home. Flatten the curve, stay inside, isolate. We were forced apart, but determined to still come together. There were moments of fear, grief, loneliness, but also of hope. Give me a hug. <laughs> what didn't change? Canadian compassion, strength, and resilience. With most of the country shut down, Canadians stayed on the front lines, caring for the sick, stocking shelves with food, delivering supplies to those in need. They are the true heroes of this Canada Day. They exemplify who we are as a nation. But 2020 has also been a reckoning, exposing ugly truths, blind eyes, and deeply flawed systems. Systems failing our seniors. Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Failing black Canadians, indigenous peoples, people of color suffering the pain of systemic racism, proving we still have so much to learn, so much to unlearn, and so much work ahead of us. So as we start to re-emerge from isolation, time to take a moment to recognize what we've overcome and what's still to come. But make no mistake, this is our moment to challenge, to change, to contribute, and to celebrate. Welcome to Canada Day 2020. Our home and native plain True patriots of love In all of us command Kato brate po telepe God keep our land glorious and free. A big thank you to Julie Black for that performance of O Canada, wonderfully powerful. Good morning to you. I'm Andrew Chang. This is Canada Day. And yes, normally we would be on Parliament Hill uh, this <laughs> at this time of day. But of course, uh, because of the pandemic, that's not possible, physical distancing and all. So we are broadcasting here from the Toronto Islands. And we're going to spend the next couple of hours acknowledging where this country has been, of course, celebrating where it's at, but also recognizing that there are big challenges to come. And we are going to do that by connecting with frontline workers. We are going to be connecting with regular everyday Canadians and we'll have a few surprises up our sleeves as well promise uh, now to help us out we are going to need to know how you are spending this Canada Day and we have a team of reporters across the country from coast to coast uh, out west in Vancouver out east as well that we are going to be connecting with you can see them there on your screens but let's start out east Meg Roberts standing by and hey you're on the water happy Canada Day 
Happy Canada Day to you as well. Yes, we've taken you down to the St. John's Harbour. Normally behind me uh, would be spots reserved for tour boats. Obviously, you don't see too many of those out today. It's definitely been a different summer, uh, especially for the tourism industry. The province relies on tourism, uh, but Newfoundland and Labrador closed their borders to the rest of Canada. Now, that is supposed to change as of Friday. The Atlantic provinces have agreed on a regional bubble, which means if you uh, are a resident of Atlantic Canada, you will now be able to visit without having to self-isolate for 14 days. Now, for somebody like the boat operator here, uh, that's good news because it means more business. Others are a little bit more cautious. They're a little bit more apprehensive, especially because the province has done a really good job at keeping the COVID numbers low. Now, we wanted to take you guys out to an iceberg, but that wasn't possible. So we've brought a little chunk of 10,000 year old ice uh, onto the boat to show you. Wow. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I was not expecting that, and but that is uh, impressive <laughs> in its own way. We wanted to bring a little of the province uh, to the rest of Canada today. Beautiful. I love it. Uh, Meg Roberts, you stay safe out there. Hopefully you stay dry as well. Thank you so much. Uh, let's connect now with Leanne Young, who is in Vancouver. Uh, hey, Leanne, long time no see. Long time no see, Andrew. I don't have any icebergs for you. Did try to find the money shot. I'm standing Shucks. right here at English Bay, one of the most iconic locations on the West Coast. And a little bit of a cool and gray morning here. And you know what? It feels fitting for the type of Canada Day that we are experiencing. Now, almost everything in the province has reopened. We're in phase three of the reopening here in BC. You know, we've been very fortunate that BC has flattened the curve very quickly. But despite all that, all the celebrations we're seeing for Canada Day mostly going virtual just like the rest of the country. Now uh, here on the West Coast we were concerned at the beginning because you, you know standing here the gateway to the Pacific we are a international travel hub we have so many people Asian tourists coming in and travelers there were concerns that we would be hit hard by COVID but thanks to some smart handling and uh, just compliance by so many British Columbians and sacrifices we've been able to overcome uh, much of COVID and you know, here on, on this Canada Day for a bit of an unusual one. Hmm. All right, Leanne Young uh, in Vancouver, thank you so much. Uh, now, without the usual big gatherings this year to really make this day come alive, we need your help. So show us how you're celebrating Canada Day by sending us a photo or even a, a short video. Just be sure to flip your phone so that it's horizontal. You can email us at canadaday at cbc.ca or you can message CBC News on Facebook or tag us in your Instagram story at CBC News. Can't wait to see them. And uh, hey, we will share them a little bit later in the program. And make no mistake, there is a lot to celebrate today, a lot to reflect upon as well. 2020 has been unprecedented, certainly unpredictable, and the pandemic has pushed us to new limits. We need to slow and stop the spread of this virus if we are going to come through this uh, strongly as a country. In the 14 weeks since that warning, we've been forced to take a hard look at ourselves, our country, and the system failures exposed by COVID-19 at a cost that has been heartbreaking. He was a really great guy. He made so many friends wherever he went. More than 100,000 cases, 8,500 deaths, four out of five in long-term care facilities. I love you. But there are also reasons for hope. Across Canada, the number of active cases is dropping, and the daily rate of new infections? Well, take a look at this curve. That's not flattened, it's crushed. Just as important, more people are recovering every day from the virus, now surpassing the rate of infections. Canadians did this. But there is one group that led the way, frontline workers, healing us, feeding us, and helping us navigate these challenging times. We'll be meeting some of them over the next two hours to celebrate their courage and dedication with songs, stories, and some surprises. Let's get started. And the first frontline workers you are going to meet have been right at the heart of this COVID crisis. My name is Paul Koblitz. I'm an eMERGE physician, and I work at Mount Sinai Hospital in downtown Toronto. And my name is uh, Yashi Athendra, and I'm also an emergency physician. Largely the same. 
except now there's this invisible lethal virus that we have to assume everybody has. And we have to make sure that we ourselves are protected uh, with full PPE so that we don't actually bring that virus home to our families. I think that the real important thing to note is that there are hundreds and thousands of other people across the country who are doing their part and are working through the same risks um, as we are. So I don't necessarily think that we're, you know, we're standouts or making that much more of a difference than they are. The nurses see these patients many, many more times than I do a shift. Social workers, I think, have been huge, and, uh, and geriatric nurses as well. There's so many people doing such an incredible part, and we're just a small part of that. I'm so proud of the people in this country for banding together and quarantining themselves for months to help make sure that our hospital systems didn't fall apart and uh, make sure that we are safe. I thought you had it worked. I'm just so proud to be a part of this country, and to me, Canada is love. To me, Canada is being kind to one another. Happy, Happy Canada, Canada Day! Day. And we have Yashi and Paul joining us now. Happy Canada Day to the both of you. Uh, Yashi, I, it, it blows my mind that you think you play just a small part in all of this. I think that, um, you know, as physicians, we're always trying to, you know, help people and do our part. But um, there are so many people in my department that have contributed and just worked so hard. And, I mean, we talked a little bit about the nurses, the social workers, the... PSWs, the you know um, the the, uh, the staff that clean the hospital, they're all doing so much. I'm already tearing up. Um, and so you know, as physicians, we are we are a small part of that. But there's so many people that we need to thank um, that are doing their job. Yeah, well, well, well hey, and, and clearly um, today you're working in policy with your, with your two kids at home, both of you taking on a lot, uh, not just today, but, but at all times. So, so listen, I have, a, I have a little surprise for you. Um, we have a special Mama. guest who wants to say thank you to him, himself. So go ahead and look at your screen here. Uh, someone who is no stranger to, uh, to helping out in hospitals and who knows full well the amount of work that goes in there. Hey, PK Subban, uh, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing very, very well. First of all, uh, what an honor and a pleasure it is for me to be able to come on here and express my gratitude on behalf of all Canadians on how proud we are, first of all, of yourself, Paul and Yashi, and all the first responders, EMTs, nurses. Um, and like you said, you know, it, it takes a village uh, to get this something like this done. And you guys have been doing a great job on the front lines and in, in, in working hard to try to crush this thing. So on behalf of everyone, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, Paul, what do you say to that? <laughs> it's pretty overwhelming. It's been an overwhelming year. But, um, we're just doing our part just like everybody else. There's just so many other people that I feel have sacrificed more than us and are working harder than us. Uh, we've been pretty lucky. Like... Uh, these two are healthy and we're healthy, so we're just uh, grateful to do our part. Yeah, well, well hey, listen, I, I know the two of you have your hands full, so so I'm going to let you guys go, uh, but but allow me to, to echo what PK said. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all your work. Uh, thank you so much. PK, though, uh, you're not off the hook just yet. I have a few questions for you. Because, I mean, you know how how resilient this country is, but but I know that you also know the struggle that this country is in, that this country has has flaws as well. I mean, how do you approach Canada Day with all of that in mind? Well, I, I really believe that truly the best days for our country are ahead. Um, you know, I, I'm a strong believer in our country. Um, I've represented our country in many different ways. Um, you know, from the governor giving me a Medal of Honor to the donations to the hospital. People come together in Canada and they come together better than any other country I've ever seen. Uh, I'm so proud to be a Canadian and I really believe the best days are ahead. Um, you know, what we've seen over the past few months is the willingness, the willingness to, for people to educate themselves, number one, whether it be about this pandemic and the virus going on, but also about issues in our society. Um, you know, I, I've been a firm believer that you have to use your platform everyone's platform is different some people work on television some people have social media 
Some people are frontline workers and that's their platform to make a difference. We all have to take the initiative onto ourselves to say, what are you doing to make a difference? What are you doing to make our society a better place and our communities better places for children, the next generation that's coming? And that's how I see my impact is just continuing to try to use my platform. Yes, I'm a hockey player. You know, that's what I do for a living. That's what pays the bills. But I also do understand that there's a lot of kids that look up to me and not just myself, but my peers. You know, uh, as a Canadian hockey player, there's plenty of other uh, Canadian hockey players in the league that are great role models. Sidney Crosby, Connor McDavid, these types of players, Jonathan Taves, um, guys who have had successful careers. And I think together, using our platform in the NHL, we're going to do some special things moving forward. And hopefully that sets an example, not just for Canadians, but for people all around the world. Yeah, well, well, well hey, uh, PK, I, I know you, you work real hard both on the ice and, and off the ice. I lived in Montreal for a number of years. I was there the same uh, around the same time that you were as well. So, hey, thank you for, for, for taking the time to join us and a uh, happy Canada Day to you. Hey, happy Canada Day. I wish I could be in Canada right now with the family, um, but I know that everyone, I just want to tell everyone to enjoy themselves, but be safe. There's still some things going on, you know, obviously with this virus, we got to contain it. So have your fun, uh, but be safe today. Happy Canada Day. Hey, um, PK, before I let you go, actually, I I'm just getting word from one of my producers in the control room that uh, reportedly Toronto and Edmonton have just been chosen as hub cities uh, when it comes to the resumption of NHL play oh, and, of course, play for the Stanley Cup. That is no small deal. I have to ask you about that. I mean, how, how do you feel about that? Well, listen, I, I think that most Canadians, I share it with them, everybody wants to see hockey on TV. But, you know, first and foremost, I think that's a sign um, that things are getting better. You know, there's no way that hockey's going to get on the ice if things are getting worse. So um, I'm all for people getting healthier, uh, for people getting their lives back. And if that happens to be with hockey on television, I mean, there's no better sport to watch as far as being Canadian watching hockey. And the only thing that I resent is that I won't have an opportunity to raise that Stanley Cup in, in one of those cities. So I'm a little bit upset about that, but um, I am happy about the progress. Well, hey, PK, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Uh, really appreciate that. All the best to you, and, and happy Canada Day. And so, so hey, to recap, uh, reports in that, that Toronto and Edmonton have been chosen as hub cities uh, once NHL play resumes in earnest. Uh, that is going to be uh, quite the development to keep tracking. A lot of smiles, I'm sure, on people's faces right now. All right, uh, now, giving thanks to, to healthcare workers like Yashi and Paul, who we met just a few moments ago, that has become a nightly event. Does this sound familiar to you? One neighborhood uh, that went above and beyond is right here in Toronto, and that's where we find Tashana Reed. Hey, Tashana. Hey, Andrew, happy Canada Day. I'm in the Parkdale neighborhood in the city's west end, and I'm standing outside of the Elm Grove Living Centre, and it's one of the long-term care facilities that was hard hit by COVID-19 during this pandemic. Uh, there were 21 residents who died, more than 100 staff and residents also who, who uh, became sick, and so it's been a challenging time. But when the Parkdale community learned uh, what was happening in the, in this, at this particular home, they wanted to come together. They wanted to act. I'm here with the Isaac Joseph family, and they are part of nightly celebrations. Since April, night after night, since this, uh, this facility was hit by an outbreak, you and the rest of the community have come out to spread some joy. What brings you out each night? We come out every night because, as you said, this, this living center was hard hit by COVID, but it's really the residents in the center that just, you know, they wait at the windows every night, and we just love to come together to be there for them. Also, we've really gotten to know our neighbors during this time, and so it's like a little mini celebration every night to just support the residents and the healthcare workers at the living center. It was amazing. I was here uh, Friday evening to see these celebrations up close. Quite amazing energy. And uh, I also, there are a number of relatives of loved ones, you know, people who are inside this home who have come 
and been part of that. What have you heard from them about how this experience has helped them? Yes, I have spoken to Brad uh, specifically and Nicole, and I saw them on their first night when they came and visited their parents who are in the Living Center, and it was just beautiful to see their reactions and to hear that their parents weren't actually exaggerating. Brad said he thought his mom was exaggerating when she said every night the neighborhood comes out, but they were just really happy that we're able to give them this support and joy during this time. And the community has also come together in many other ways. Uh, tell us a bit about what has changed in Parkdale during this time. Well, during this time, Stella, for one, she teaches a workout class every Saturday at 6.15. She brings, invites community members to come in. Um, also, there's been... Black Lives Matter yeah. protests mm -hmm. at uh, Queen Victoria School that we went to. We've had conversations and actually a march, a migrant workers march that we had here at the Living Center. So we're really having the necessary conversations that will help affect change, not just in the community, but also in this nation. And also, like, you know, Indigenous relations, we're all talking about all of it. So I feel like our community has become more conscious during this time. It's been amazing to see how this community has really rallied, uh, but also come together. Uh, thank you so much, Isaac Joseph family, Andrew. Uh, just one of the snapshots of what's happening in communities across this country. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> hey, thank, thank you so you. much for that, Tashana. Um, now, of course, uh, medical workers were on the very front lines of this pandemic, but another group that captured our attention, the public health officers. Watch this. We don't just need to flatten the curve, we need to plank it. Their briefings are the soundtrack of a pandemic, their confidence backed by science. Among them, Dr. Theresa Tan, the country's chief public health officer. Their job, helping Canadians comprehend a strange, invisible enemy, reminding us that everyone has a role to play. And for that, they've earned trust and gratitude. Will lead us through self-isolation. We'll work from home for you, order in groceries too. Dr. Bonnie Henry has been guiding BC residents with a mix of calm. Yeah, the risk still remains very low. Humor. Wash your hands like you've been chopping jalapenos and you need to change your contacts. And compassion. And I just know how stressful it is for our healthcare system, for my colleagues, and for families. Some have even become fashion influencers. When Alberta's top doc, Dina Hinshaw, wore a dress featuring the periodic table, demand for it skyrocketed. The scarves worn by Toronto's Dr. Eileen Davila have their own Twitter account. T-shirts featuring Bonnie Henry are raising money for charity. The makers of her favorite shoe came out with a model in her name, and she's the inspiration behind the ballad of Bonnie Henry. The voice that you hear is a Bonnie Henry. The voice that you hear is of Bonnie Henry. And joining me now, none other than Dr. Bonnie Henry. Uh, Dr. Henry, happy Canada Day to you. Good morning. Happy Canada Day. <laughs> So, so listen, on a day like this, I mean, obviously celebration on a lot of people's minds, but I imagine from your perspective, perspective uh, caution and prudence must be at the forefront as well. Absolutely. This is a very unusual Canada Day. And, um, you know, I like to think that we will come together again and we will celebrate again. But this year we have to do it quietly with small numbers and safely. You know, I, I feel like I have to ask you just with that setup of, of the following that, that you have attracted and, and not, not just for the content of your briefings, but, but also the way in which you've delivered them. I mean, the, the fact that, that British Columbians and, and even Canadians have reacted this way to you. How, how, do, you, how do you feel about that? It's... Um... It's a little bit strange, to be honest, um, but, you know, this is the work that we do in public health. Um, part of our role, the most important part, important part of our role is to, to care for people, to make sure that people know what they need to do, to give them the means to do it. And, and that's what we've done in Canada. And it's, we've worked together and it's made a huge, huge difference. All right. Um, Dr. Henry, how, how cautiously optimistic are you? I mean, 
regular everyday Canadians have been talking to us saying, hey, you know, on the one hand, it feels like maybe that first wave has, has flattened, we've, we've crushed it, uh, maybe we're in the clear. What would you say to those folks? Yeah, you know what? We have absolutely done a great job in controlling this virus, but it is still out there. And we know that we're still seeing cases every day. We're still seeing smaller numbers, thankfully, but we have to keep our guard up. Um, this is um, a period of time where we can start to open up and do more things, but we have to do it carefully. We have to have a plan. We have to keep those foundational pieces in place because we know that this virus is going to circulate and we can't give it a chance to grow again. And we need to be cautious as we're going into respiratory season. But, you know, right now, we have done a good job. And we do, we can start to see people again. We can go back to work. We can go back to some of the social things that we've been doing. But we need to keep our foundations in place. And that means safe distances, hand washing, wearing a mask if you can't be um, two meters away from people. Those are the things that are going to get us mm -hmm. through this, this, uh, this whole crisis. Certainly. Yeah, certainly not not small things to keep in mind. Uh, Dr. Henry, thank you so much for, for your time and happy Canada Day to you. So so listen, um, again, this is not a n normal Canada Day, right? Uh, we are used to seeing the Prime Minister and his family on Parliament Hill to celebrate, but today he and Sophie Gregoire Trudeau are joining us virtually. Uh, happy Canada Day to the both of you. So, so you're clearly, uh, you're not on the Hill. Where are you and what are you up to? Uh, we're in a farm just outside of Ottawa where uh, every day uh, people volunteer to help out uh, in build, uh, make uh, grow produce for the, uh, the Ottawa Food Bank. Uh, so we thought, you know, we've seen uh, incredible acts of, uh, of helping each other out over the past number of months. Uh, what we're celebrating today is a country where people come together and are there for each other. So uh, we brought the family to uh, pick some vegetables and, uh, and uh, highlight the amazing work that Canadians are doing to help each other out. Right. Well, at the same time, Prime Minister, not everybody has the luxury to celebrate today, whether they are being mindful of their, their physical health, their mental health, their, their financial health in a lot of cases. And they may be coming from a place where they're not so sure that they can recover. I mean, what would you say to those folks who are having a particularly hard time these days? Well, there's no question that this Canada Day is not like many others. Uh, people aren't going to be celebrating the same way. They're not going to be seeing their loved ones the same way. In some places, yes. Other places, no. Uh, and we have to remember that what we are celebrating uh, is a country uh, that always has lots, of, lots to do to improve. We, uh, we're an amazing country, uh, but we could be even more. And that's where uh, being better about supporting people who are, are vulnerable, who are marginalized, uh, is a commitment we make today and every day. And I think that's something that is worth reflecting on uh, and celebrating. Ms. Uh, Gregoire Trudeau, I, I know you have particular first-hand experience. You, you understand how difficult the coronavirus is and how hard it can hit. Can, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about what that was like, but, but also maybe what you've taken away from that, what you've learned from it? Well, having suffered from COVID, as you can see now, I'm super healthy, healthy so I'm, I'm just so glad to be standing here, you know, in, in great health and being here with my kids because as parents we know we can tell each other you know we can tell our kids whatever we want but it's in the actions that really matter so we're so glad to be here today and this place you know uh, helps 39,000 people every month and uh, they've seen an increase to 15 to 30 percent in the needs for food banks so this is really a, a very important service and I think that wherever whatever you've gone through in the past months um, if you have your health it's a, in our responsibility to continue to help and uh, that's why we're here today. Prime Minister, one more question for you. I, I know you folks are busy and you, and you have to get going soon, but, but I need to ask you, and, and you brought up this notion that there is a serious systemic problem in Canadian society right now. And, and I think of black, indigenous people of color who have been exceedingly open with, with all of the things that they see that is wrong in Canadian society. What, what would you tell them in terms of... of what you can do for them sooner rather than later to, to rebuild this country in a way that makes them feel like they are a part of it. There's no question that you know Canada and Canadians uh, uh, have extraordinary opportunities as citizens, and we're a great country. 
but there are some real problems that we still have to work on, and one of them is systemic discrimination, uh, continued marginalization of Indigenous peoples, of uh, racialized Canadians. Uh, and that doesn't prevent us from uh, saying that, wow, we're a great country, but it does highlight that we need to be even better. We need to do more to make sure that everyone feels the benefits of this country, and that's why uh, we're looking and working with uh, communities across the country, looking at our systems, uh, and we're going to be making changes to make sure uh, that everyone can celebrate celebrate this country every day and not just on Canada Day. Okay, well, I hope we'll have more opportunities to talk about that in the future. Uh, I, I know time can be hard to find, so uh, Prime Minister and Ms. Gregoire Trudeau, I appreciate you, you finding that time to, to speak with us today. Thanks so much. Happy Canada Day. Oh, it's uh, Thank you. great to see you guys today. Happy Canada Day right across the country. All right. Now, uh, on Parliament Hill, where normally uh, there, there would be so many people, thousands of them, it is a much different scene this year. David Thurton is there for us. Hey, David. Hey, Andrew. You know, there's certainly more people than I thought would be on the hill right now. Behind me is a rally that of, of people who are protesting the lockdown measures that we've seen by various provincial and territorial governments. They are gathered, I would say, about 700 people. There are people with Canadian flags. There are people with the Quebec flag, the fleur de lis. There's someone with a UN flag with a cross through it, and, they're, and that just gives you a sense that they're not only protest, protesting lockdown issues, but also a range of issues. Obviously, this is a Canada Day like no other. Even though there are people on the Hill, we're not seeing the tens of thousands of people, sorry, the thousands of people that we would usually see here. I should just say really quickly, this was going to be a Canada Day that would be different, COVID-19 or no COVID-19, they were expecting to move the location to another place because, of course, Centre Block is undergoing renovations and so is the front lawn. So, a Canada Day like no other, as you've been saying throughout this program, and we're going to be going around Ottawa and maybe coming back to you throughout the program talking about that, Andrew. Okay, sounds good. Looking forward to it. David Thurton in Ottawa for us. Thanks so much. So throughout this program, we are highlighting the role frontline workers have played in keeping this country going, feeding us, healing us, and moving us. Watch this. My name is Rachel LeBlanc. I work for Waste and Recycling in Calgary, Alberta. Hi, my name is Caroline Olenberger. I am a relief foreman with Waste and Recycling, the city of Calgary. Good morning, how are you today? Oh, not bad. A lot of the times when our customers come into the landfill, we are the only people that they get to have social interaction with. So we've been making a little bit of an extra effort to, to try to talk to them for a couple of extra minutes. Calgarians and Canadians, they're lonely because of the social isolation right now. I actually had a customer come out and he dropped off some garbage here and then he ended up going home and his wife wanted to come out and wanted to come and just chat for a little bit. How are you? Good, thanks. So, you know, it's been really great that we can, you know, provide that support for them and go about their days with a big smile. My kids and I, because I work at the landfill, we're considered high risk. So we're exposed to potentially the virus more so than other people. So we can't see my grandparents and we can't see my parents. So we built a poster and we stuck it in my grandparents' windows and banged on the window and banged on the door and made their dog bark so that we could see them. You know, we're all going through different struggles in our lives, so I think it's important that, you know, we take those extra, st extra steps to take care of one another. In a whole, Calgarians and Canadians, we've all kind of come together and we, we know who those people are who need a little bit of extra social interaction, be it dropping food off on their doorstep, spending an extra minute saying hello, smiling at strangers if you're not wearing a mask. So it, it, that's one thing that I think has been really positive through this pandemic is how much we've come together and how you just can't keep us down. Happy Canada Day. And from Calgary, we have Caroline Olenberger joining us right now. Uh, Caroline, I heard that when you, uh, you unwind after a long day at work, there's one band in particular that you just can't get enough of. Who would that be? Uh, I really like Metric. Metric is my favorite band. <laughs> okay, and, and, and they were in, uh, on tour in Calgary not, not all that long ago, right? I mean, well, why them? 
They were here. I couldn't go see them, though. I couldn't get tickets, and I couldn't get the time off, so I didn't get to go see Metric. <laughs> okay, well, uh, here's the next best thing. Watch this. Hi, this is a little message for Caroline Allenberger. Uh, I understand you are a bit of a Metric fan. That's cool. That's amazing. I'm <laughs> sorry to hear you haven't been able to see us in concert. And sorry to say, it might be a minute oh before uh, we can come and play Calgary again, but I think we know you're going to be on the guest list for that show. Uh, I saw the video of the way that you're putting yourself out there and the kindness you're showing people, and it's really inspiring. So I just wanted to say, what is up? Caroline, we will meet in the beautiful future when concerts are back and we can all celebrate <laughs> together how we've gotten through this hard time. Happy Canada Day. You rule. Peace. Um, oh, my gosh. Happy Canada what Day. Is Thank up? you so much. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my God. How cool is that? <laughs> that really, really cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> I can't even so, believe so, it. So, hey, I mean, now <laughs> you, yeah, now you are going to have to find time to get to that concert because word on the street is that you're on the guest oh, list. Oh, I will. <laughs> oh, that is so amazing. Right. Thank hey, you so uh, much. <laughs> hey, the, your smile is all the thanks we need. Um, Caroline, thank you so much, uh, <laughs> not just for appearing on our program, but for all your hard work. Happy Canada Day to you. And do you want the coffee? Thank you. Happy Canada Day. <laughs> okay, so uh, lots more to come in the program. Many more surprises as well. We're also going to look at how COVID-19 and the Black Lives Matter protests are intimately connected and of course we'll meet more Canadians on the front lines I'm Maru Ataya. I am Salim Ajaj we came from Syria I have four kids and we have been here in Canada for years I opened this Damascus market 2019 it was very difficult to start you know, because, you know, different language and different area, different business. And also, we still have a lot of things to learn how to learn business here in Canada in the pandemic. We want to still open because we want to feel we are a part of the community. I need to help my neighborhood and my neighbors and my community, too. I, I am very happy when some people told me thank you to still open. My name is Mohammed. I'm 11 years old. I like to work with my mom and dad. My favorite part in the store is to help seniors and help everybody since they helped us a lot when we came here. So I would like to help them also, the same way they helped us. Most of the people like to come to our store instead to go to the big stores. And I think the local people want to support us. This good, uh, good time to help my community and my neighbors and also feel like I am Canadian. Canada to me is my home.
Hi, my name is Rishav Brown and I'm a grocery store worker. I've been a grocery store worker for 11 years. I'm very passionate about social justice. I'm very passionate about economic justice. I do community organizing. I'm from an island in the Caribbean called St. Vincent and I came here in December 2007 and I've been living here since. I think the hardest part of what I'm doing right now is probably my commute. The time that I gotta go in at 5.30 the bus is like heavily packed. Um, social distancing is not practiced uh, very much at all. A lot of times um, commuters don't even have like, we don't even have proper PPE. I remember in the beginning of the pandemic with the enforcement officers, um, it was pretty tough. I had to get a letter from my employer stating that I'm a, that I'm a essential worker. The fact that I was always worried that I would get stopped by the cops and what that interaction would be like just pulling that letter out of my pocket. Like, it's a very scary situation that exists in my head. I think the work that I'm doing is very important because we are always gonna need groceries. So for us, just being open and being the ones, keeping the stock on the shelf, keeping the produce fresh, keeping all that stuff going, you know, that gave us a sense that, whoa, like we're actually like doing important work. I do yoga every day um, and I meditate twice a day just to stay sane, just to find some peace and some balance throughout all the chaos. I just want to say that like what I've learned is that Canadians are like genuinely um, kind people. Um, I've seen a lot of people come together um, through this pandemic by sticking together and that's what I see you know through all this in, in my Canadian brothers and sisters. Hey, welcome back to Canada Day 2020, where we are celebrating where this country is and how far it's come, but also acknowledging the challenges ahead. Now, in the midst of COVID-19, another sort of public health emergency that's been made clear, systemic racism, especially against Black and Indigenous Canadians. Now, watch this. As millions of people around the world unite to protest the killing of George Floyd and other black men and women, Canadians are adding their voices about the reality here. So many people feel threatened every day simply because of the color of their skin. And across Canada, the actions of police are being called into question. Among the most recent cases, the deaths of Regis Korczynski Paquette, DeAndre Campbell, and Chantel Moore during police wellness checks, the violent arrest of First Nation Chief Alan Adam. We are criminals by our skin color, and that has to stop. Cases such as theirs and many others are fueling a growing demand for action. There are calls to defund police, to end systemic racism across all parts of society, and to acknowledge the racist history that has been embedded in our culture, our laws, and our attitudes. I, in this moment, right now, am speaking to every single white person that is here today. You have a responsibility to make change. It is a time of reckoning for all Canadians to listen, to learn, and reflect. So joining me now, we have Donovan Bennett, host and writer with Sportsnet, also someone I consider uh, a friend and someone who I lean on when I just need a generally thoughtful guy to talk to. Uh, hey, Donovan, you know, Canadians have a lot to be proud of. They have a lot to be, uh, you know, to, to celebrate. What do you think they should be more mindful of? Yeah, I mean, I think you should lean into that pride uh, and be mindful around it. And so I am really proud of uh, our country, though we've rallied around the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, look what we've done. We strategized, we've mobilized, we've raised money and funds. We have banged pots and pans so that our frontline workers felt seen and heard. So there's pride in that, that we have the capacity to care as a country. But at the same time, we should remember that that should be a standard that we do it all of the time because the frontline workers for our country the history of our country often have been minorities the land that this country is founded on was taken from minorities minorities built our railway system across the country many of us have asked more minorities to come into our households and be the ceos and to help raise our kids athletes have come here that are minorities that have won us medals but yet 
we treat them as second-class citizens often. So the rest of the world is envious of us because we are such a great mosaic. They want to come here to experience the culture and the food and the music. But yet when those tourists leave, the people who are still here don't have the same experience uh, as some of their counterparts. So that standard, we need to uphold it for everyone. And when you're celebrating with pride today on Canada Day, all of the great progress we have made, just acknowledge that there are some people who have a lot less to celebrate right now, and we need to work hard so that's not the case. Donovan, uh, among the many things that I that I call upon you uh, to talk about, sports occasionally is is one of them. I, we have about 20 seconds left. I got to get your your quick sense of of the reports coming out that that potentially Toronto and Edmonton uh, could be chosen as hub cities. It's not final yet. Yeah, it's it's not final. I think hopefully it brings with it some economy. It brings with it some uh, some excitement for people who really did a lot of sacrifice to make sure that our country is in a position so that we could become a hub city but also hopefully our administrators our politicians make sure it's done in a way that it doesn't make those sacrifices all for naught so so i'm i'm happy but i'm cautiously optimistic that it goes well all right more details to come on that donovan bennett happy canada day same to you my friend Okay, let's check in now with Joanne Vrakis, uh, another, dare I say, old friend in Montreal. And Joanne, you've got a guest with you. It's so good to hear from you, Andrew. And yes, we're joined here in Old Montreal uh, by Will Prosper, who's a community activist, very involved in the Black Lives Matter movement and a filmmaker. Uh, and uh, we're so happy that you took the time to join us on this holiday, Will. Uh, I want to start things off by talking about what you just told me uh, during the break. You said... I'm exhausted, and many people in your community are exhausted. Uh, can you tell, tell us why? Well, first of all, there's the images that we have to live through over and over. Uh, there's the weight that we carry for so many years. And you have to understand, you know, I sound like a broken record for some time. You know, I've been speaking about racial profiling for 12 years now. And my father was talking about it. So it's a long overdue conversation that we're, we've been avoiding as a society. I'm still glad we're coming on that subject. We're talking about these issues. And I'm still wondering what kind of decision is going to be taken by the politician to make sure that they try to stop all these injustices that we're facing uh, as a community. And, you know, when we're talking about racist, uh, syst uh, systemic racism. Yeah. Let's talk about systemic racism, that word, that word, there was such a big tug of war for uh, to get the premier, Premier François Legault, to use it when talking about systemic racism, uh, especially when it comes to the Montreal police uh, and the uh, provincial police, the SQ. Um, is that part of what makes this conversation different than the conversation that's happening in the rest of the country when it comes to this movement? You can see the premier, Justin Trudeau talking about racial profiling, talking about, you know, systemic racism. You can see everybody else from all the other provinces talking about it. You can see police officers also talking about it. Over here, it's really hard to have that conversation. It's a distinct society, and I think we're living into it. And perhaps, you know, Legault is appealing to his base, unfortunately. But I can see there's a change, there's a shift right now with the population. I think there's a solidarity that is building. People are being more aware about it, want to talk about it. And we can see the mayor of Montreal has been talking about it as well, you know. So hopefully change is going to come forward because the population is coming down in the streets. We organized a few protests. There was more than 25,000 people that came down in the streets. So we can see that people are being uh, in solidarity with what's taking place right now, not just in the United States, but the realities that we're facing over here in Quebec. Will Prosper, thank you so much for taking the time and, and sharing uh, part of your experience with us. Again, Will Prosper, uh, community activist and a filmmaker. Back to you, Andrew. Thank you very much, Joanne. My name is Jacob Calendar Prasad. I'm 21 from Vancouver, British Columbia. Some of the working with my social activism is trying to build a community together, trying to build uh, a group of people to come together to support people of color and other races in our community. As of lately, I've been in charge of logistical and strategic planning for these organized uh, protests that have been going on throughout Vancouver. The motivation for me has always been there. We do have racism and racial profiling to our community that we can't tolerate anymore and that me, myself, I won't tolerate it. And if I can make a difference, just one difference or one stepping stone to change a policy and making it easier for my people, of all people and all races, then that's what I'm going to do. 
it's good to have the support and see people coming out. Being in a pandemic like this, these are hard times. The future is so unclear and it calls for a time for major change. And if that is what we're willing to do is put our lives on the line to catch this pandemic, to catch this virus, just so we can influence change for a better generation, for a better future. I learned that Canadians during this time do care and do have the strength to unite together and fight for a change. Peace over violence. It shows that there's hope and faith in our future and in our generation for our people here in Canada. I have never been more proud to call myself a Canadian. That is the real Canada and that is my Canada. And it is now my pleasure to bring into this conversation Julie Black. Of course, uh, folks at home, you've already seen her singing the national anthem just a few moments ago. Uh, Julie, happy Canada Day to you. Happy Canada Day to you, too. Thank you so much for having me. I, I, yeah, hey, our pleasure. And, and I got to ask you, when you sing the anthem, what goes through your head? Well, lately, um, as I've been kind of dissecting the lyrics, I said, you know, the true North strong and free. And it makes me wonder, I start to think about how free as a black woman, a black person, I and my community actually are. With glowing hearts, we see these, we see the rise, the true North strong and free. True North, what does that really mean? And so I've had to really, I, I took a step back. Someone asked me to be a part of another Canada Day montage, and I declined. I actually declined. I said, you know what? For me to be in a clip as the one black woman, it was tokenism. And so I decided to say no. Hmm. And so there's things well, now we okay, have to really but, but, intentionality. But so let me ask you this. I mean, change. You, you have demanded it for a long, long time. Do, do you feel like it's coming? Change is now. It's not coming. Change is now. You know, I, I, there's a line in Caroline or Change that I said as the character Caroline. She said, change comes fast. Change comes slow. But change comes. And I think that the more we move with <laughs> intentionality and with, with grace, with a boldness, and to really teach one another about each other's culture, about each other's pain, we can really turn our pain into purpose and then really, truly move the dial into a better today. I think we're often looking to the future, we're looking to tomorrow, but the only time we really have is now. And so I say decide. I say make a decision, especially when I speak to, you know, my white friends and colleagues and peers. It's like, you know, make a decision to not be lukewarm. We don't want lukewarm anymore. We don't want cold coffee, hot coffee. We, we need to make sure that we have a, a specific, definitive plan for what you're going to do for us as black people. I want to learn about your white. I want to know what it's like. What was your life like? And then together we can do this. We can build a bridge big enough for everyone to cross. Right. Uh Hey, Julie, I, I appreciate you, and, and I appreciate hearing from you and, and the fact that you made the time. Uh, thanks so much, and, and happy Canada Day to you. Happy Canada Day. <laughs> it's getting too heavy for y'all today. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Bye. Take care. When we come back, we've got some more surprises, believe it or not, for our frontline workers, but we want to leave you with more of Julie's music. Here is Ryan. We belong to each other, but we are the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Hey, welcome back. We are just a few minutes away now from the Prime Minister's Canada Day address. We are going to hear him speak to two major crises in this country, the pandemic and racism. But as we hit the top of the clock, we want to play for you, O oh Canada. Have a listen to this. Hello, my name is Kai Bruno and I'm 14 years old from Samson Cree Nation in Muscogee, Alberta, and I'm going to be singing the national anthem in Cree. Oh, Canada, Nikina Nitaskinan, Kisaki Hitinan, O Takawikiak. Nite hinak kiwa pam tinan, so ki kiwe tinok, pokoi te ota o Canada, kasito skatinan, no tawinan, kana weita, o Canada kini poi. Samatinan, O Canada, Kini Poe, Samatinan. O Canada, uh, O Canada, indeed. Um, hard to believe that that only became Canada's national anthem officially 40 short years ago. Now, any moment. We are expecting the Prime Minister to address Canadians live. Of course, normally this happens on Parliament Hill. These days, things are a little different. You can thank the pandemic for that, physical distancing, and also the Prime Minister is uh, with his family right now and will be addressing the nation virtually. And, of course, that will be, uh, that will be followed by an address from the Governor-General, Julie Payette. We are broadcasting here live from the Toronto Islands, where it's a, a pretty, uh, pretty temperate maybe mid-20s, 25 degrees or so, beautiful place. But again, we normally at this time, we would be surrounded by, by food trucks, by, by thousands of Canadians waving flags. Uh, there would be free concerts. There would be fireworks, uh, of course, in the evening, but very different. So, hey, the Prime Minister uh, is queued up, ready to go. Let's have a listen. Uh, the fireworks. I'm sure many of you are still thinking about that, but this year that's probably not the only thing you have on your mind. For our family, as for yours I'm sure, Canada Day is just not the same this year. Things have changed, our lives have changed, but as always we adapt and we make it work. Here with the Ottawa Food Bank, spending the day harvesting fresh vegetables for families in need. And Justin and I um, and the kids were so happy to be able to lend a hand. And right across the country, we're celebrating, inspiring people like everyone here today. People like them, but also so many of you who have turned a challenge into an opportunity to unite as citizens and as a country. This year is unlike any other, but it's certainly not the first time that our country has celebrated today during tough times. 80 years ago, our parents and grandparents marked this day almost a year into the Second World War. That weekend's edition of the Toronto Star told them that they were living in circumstances such as no one imagined would come to pass. Well, eight decades later, that sounds pretty familiar. Maybe you're able to spend today with family and friends, something I don't think anyone will take for granted after this spring, but maybe that's not possible for you. Maybe you're celebrating without someone you love, a mom who's a frontline worker, a friend who hasn't been able to come home, a loved one you've lost to this terrible virus. The last few months have been hard, and on this Canada Day, we need to continue to be there for each other. En tant que Canadien, as Canadians, we know how important it is to be there for each other. Solidarity is not only part of our identity, it's our way of life. We have lived through too many long winters not to help a stranger dig his car out of a snowbank. Because as Canadians, when times are tough, we do not look inward. We help each other. We're there for the most vulnerable and the people hardest hit. We think of the people we love, but also of the people we don't know. The reason that our communities are resilient, and I know that they are. The reason that Canada stands strong and united, and I know that it does, is the choices that Canadians make every single day. The nurses and doctors who protect those around them. 
the women and men in uniform who serve at home and overseas, and the people of every age, faith and creed who stand by one another. In recent months, right across this country, we have joined our forces to get through these tough times. And we now have an opportunity to build a better Canada for everyone. That is our challenge in 2020 and in the coming years. And I know that we will be equal to the task. What makes Canada special is not that we know that this is the best country in the world, it's that we know that it could be. We know our work together is not yet done. Not until every senior has a safe place to live. Not while anyone faces racism or injustice. Not while we still have so far to go on the path of reconciliation. Where we go from here is up to each of us. In recent months, we saw what it means to be good neighbors and to be part of a community. We now know that we can really lean on each other. We won't lose our focus and we want to get there together and that's why we keep each other motivated we lift each other up we have each other's backs but we also have each other's hearts we are so proud as Canadians to know that our reputation is that we are strong because of our diversity and through these difficult times not only is the world watching our kids are watching so to all the kids out there, you've been so amazing. We're so proud of you. You are the leaders of today and tomorrow. Together, we are unstoppable. When the Toronto Star in 1940 remarked that people were celebrating this day at a difficult time, they also said this. It has become Canada's century, Canada's century of opportunity to change the course of history. That was the reality our parents and grandparents were called to face. That was the challenge to which they rose. And this is the country they built. On this Canada Day, it is our turn. We must now restart and rebuild a Canada for the 21st century. My friends, I know that together we are ready. Bonne fête du Canada, tout le monde. Happy Canada Day, Happy everyone. Ca Happy Canada Day, everyone. We love you. So there you have Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, his wife Sophie Gregoire Trudeau, addressing Canadians live. Uh, that's from a farm uh, in the Ottawa area that, that donates produce to, to local food banks. And you heard in his message uh, the Prime Minister really trying to strike that balance between being proud of this country, being celebratory of what this country has accomplished over the years and as it continues to do so, uh, but also being mindful and, and recognizing that this is a country in the throes of, of some very difficult circumstances, whether we, we talk about COVID-19 or whether we're talking about the issue of systemic racism and, and the extent to which it permeates this society. Uh, and just behind me, you might have heard a, a plane roaring overhead. I understand that was the Lancaster bomber uh, flying, uh, flying right over. You can see, oh, there's the shot right there. Well, there you go. There you go. Uh, okay, we are going to keep moving uh, because in just a moment here, we're going to hear from the Governor General, Her Excellency, the Right Honorable Julie Payette. Hello, everyone. Attili, hi. Wherever you are in our great country, greetings to you all. A special salute to the men and women who serve Canada in uniform and to the people of the First Nation, the Métis and the Inuit. Every year on this first day of July, at the beginning of the summer season, so spectacular and so vital in these northern latitudes, we take a moment to think about our good fortune and to celebrate who we are. This year is a little different because we've had to look out for one another like never before, because this year we've been tested. We are just now carefully emerging from months of fighting a deadly invisible enemy with unprecedented measures and thanks to the tireless work of those who helped slow down the virus and kept the country running. Have you ever watched toddlers interact with one another? They will often try to take away each other's toys and act selfishly, but a parent or a caregiver will come along to teach them to share and to be generous. We are taught the basics of social interaction from the very beginning. Yet if you observe further, you might see something else kick in, a basic instinct. Especially if one baby starts crying, the other will want to console and to stop the hurt. The baby will show compassion. Thank you, nurse. Thank you, nurse. 
So, are we born with compassion, or is it acquired in our upbringing? And if it is within us, as we grow up and mature, does it get re-emphasized, or does it get destroyed, depending on our life experience? I believe there are many crossroads along the road of life, where we have to make choices and decide which direction we take. This is exactly what we witness throughout the country in these trying times. The virus brought physical distancing and social isolation, pain, and death. I heard there was a secret chord. In response, Canadians chose compassion and solidarity. They chose to live with one eye on their individual needs and the other eye on the common good. It goes like this and we were quick to reinvent ourselves, from teleworking to online classes, from virtual artistic performance to two-meter shopping. We have adapted and found creative ways to connect, to support each other, to reach out, to graduate, to show gratitude, to play outside, to train, to perform, and to inspire. Your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty and the moonlight overthrew you. The pandemic has also forced us to look beyond ourselves, because we love each other, even at a distance. It has forced us to make sure that we support workers, families, and businesses, that we stand for the most vulnerable, the less fortunate, that we ensure the security and well-being of all, and that we denounce hatred and violence in all its forms. Because the inequalities and the racial divides of our society resurfaced in the fury, exposing again the flaws and shortcomings that we so need to address. Our diversity, is one of our greatest assets. There would be no invention, no creativity, no freedom if we were all the same. What makes us unique, our differences, are the strength of our nation's fabric. Just like the toddlers grow into adults, did a mature 153-year-old Canada grow into a caring nation? Will we remember the lessons of the 2020 pandemic, of the unspeakable shooting in Nova Scotia, of the importance of reconciliation? I am confident that we have, and that we will not remain indifferent, because we care. Today, let us celebrate the generosity and the resilience of everyone throughout the country, proud and free. Happy birthday, Canada. A message from the Governor General, Julie Payette. And, and just a note about that final shot that you saw in that montage. Those are the snowbirds. And, and the formation that they're performing there is known as the Missing Man Formation. It's a, it's a special kind of flyby performed as, a, as an aerial salute to those who've fallen in action. Um, certainly a sentiment applicable in a whole range of circumstances this year when you look at Canada in 2020 and perhaps most notably in that context uh, to Captain Jen Casey, who, uh, a snowbird who died in a, in a terrible accident earlier this year in the midst of the pandemic. Okay, let's take a look at our next frontline hero. My name is Shelley Ipanal Hash. I've had my commercial license for about 30 years now. Um, and I've been behind the wheel of a big truck for over 18. In August, my husband uh, was killed in a very tragic workplace accident. Uh, at that point in time, I wasn't sure whether or not I would come back to trucking. After driving over 16 years as a team, it was very difficult to make the decision of driving solo. When the COVID-19 pandemic started up, there was a call out for drivers. They were needed as essential workers to keep doing their goods. I had quite a few friends actually that have had COVID-19 and been very sick with it. 
and it was affecting drivers' lives everywhere. So I decided that I really needed to come back out and do my part. If uh, any time was for me to get behind the wheel, uh, it was now. My very first trip out during the pandemic was to deliver hand sanitizer to various businesses uh, across Canada. I'd like to say that I'm doing my part um, and other drivers out here are doing our part. We've always been what keeps the economy moving. I just think that now during the wake of the current pandemic, it's made the general public realize just how much we actually do and how much we are needed. I think something that I've learned uh, pretty much uh, from my trip across the country is, is that we all as Canadians have the same goal. We want what's best for each other and what's best for our country. Happy Canada Day! And I am so happy to be able to say hello to Shelley live on national television. Happy Canada Day right back at you, Shelley. And, and your line of work, boy, that, that doesn't look easy. How, how's your Canada Day going? It's going good, Andrew. Happy Canada Day. <laughs> um, quick thing. I know you're a hockey fan, a really big, big hockey fan. So I'd like you to meet someone who wanted to say thank you himself. Watch this. Hey, Shelley, Wendell Clark of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh my Stories God. like yours make me proud to be a Canadian. Coming out of retirement to help in this tough time shows the selflessness that you have. You would have been a great teammate because you are a Toronto Maple Leaf fan. I'm looking for a center iceman. <laughs> well, you've got an offer. What do you think? It's been a long time since I've played hockey, but I'm willing to give it a go. <laughs> that, that's got to feel pretty good for Wendell Clark himself to say hello and thank you. Oh, I am. I'm so shocked. <laughs> Well, well, listen, uh, I, I won't keep you any longer because I know you and everyone else is, is busy today. But happy Canada Day to you. Thanks so much for, uh, for joining us here on the program. Thanks for having me and happy Canada Day to all my fellow Canadians. <laughs> all right. Take care, Shelley. Um, well, clearly, few things bring Canadians together quite like hockey. So let's go to Tyne Valley in PEI where Louise Martin has some friends. Hey, Louise. Hello, welcome to Time Valley. And I gotta say, the good people of Time Valley need something to celebrate. Uh, you know, before COVID even hit, back in December, this community lost their local rink, the heart and soul of Time Valley. Then they were waiting to hear if they were a finalist in Hockeyville. And of course, that got canceled because of COVID 19. So here we are, we're in phase four on PEI, which means 50 people can gather at a time inside and outside. And that's what they're doing here today. So, Adam McClellan, used to be the rank manager in Time Valley and is helping to fundraise. So he's my guest and I'm going to ask him now, how are you feeling today? I mean, this has got to be, Adam, a bit of a silver lining. In uh, Amid COVID-19, you can have a bit of a party on Canada Day. It just feels good to be able to do something. We've had a tough year in, in Time Valley. Ever since December, we lost our rink and, you know, COVID kind of threw our plans for Craft Hockeyville and it kind of hurt our fundraising, but it's just nice to get back some kind of normality anyway. So some celebrating going on here today, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we needed something, so <laughs> this is great. I love it. So tell me quickly how fundraising is going. I know you're looking for some, for some donations here today as well. Yeah, we have a donation bucket going there. Uh, fundraising, it's, it's really slowed down since uh, COVID-19 has hit. We've had some uh, great initiatives, uh, you know, before COVID has hit. We've had some local fundraisers going on, but, you know, we're really hoping that you know, uh, admit a phase four, everything goes well, that we can, you know, kind of pick it back up, Craft Hockeyville will restart, and, yeah. you know, hopefully there's a sunny day after the rain's <laughs> over. So this is making up for it a little bit, having be, being able to celebrate on Canada Day, bringing people together. Oh, yeah, for sure it is. It's great for the community. It's great for the people in the area, and, and we're excited to be able to do this. And everyone back there is having fun. You can give us a wave back there, and the band is playing. And so, you know, despite, uh, you know, COVID-19 uh, being closed down since March, PEI, as I mentioned, is in phase four. So uh, the ability to get together and uh, celebrate Canada Day, 50, 50 people inside, 50 people outside, it's a big deal here in Time Valley. So from beautiful Time Valley, happy Canada Day, and have a great day. Andrew?
Happy Canada Day to you too, Louise. Thanks so much. Uh, let's stay on the East Coast. We're going to Meg Roberts is over in St. John's, Newfoundland. Hey, Meg. Hello, we're in the beautiful St. John's Harbor. Larry Daly has agreed for me to drive this boat. Uh, normally, the harbor would be bustling with tour ships and cruise boats, but uh, obviously, with COVID 19, that slowed things down a bit. Larry has worked uh, in the tourism industry for years, and he joins me now. What are people in the tourism industry uh, thinking today? Well, Meg, I think a lot of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians are probably brokenhearted over this summer, which is unfortunate because tourism is so much of our our income and our, you know, our, our uh, livelihood. So it, it's really hurting a lot of people. We uh, are wrapping it up. We unfortunately, we have to dock now, but uh, we're just wishing everybody a happy Canada Day from here and then St. John's, Newfoundland. <laughs> oh boy, drive safe, Meg, thanks so much. Okay, uh, we're gonna take a look at what's happening here in Toronto right now. Take a look, uh, this is Kensington Market. A group of artists inspired by, by similar scenes in the US are painting Black Lives Matter on the street. We're going to chat with those artists right after the break. But first, here's another Canadian on the front lines. My name is Jake Sanford. I'm an advanced care paramedic in Halifax, Nova Scotia. I'm part of a field assessment unit. It's a, a unit that performs testing for people that are suspected to have the COVID-19 virus. They can be tested safely in the home for, for certain populations that otherwise wouldn't be able to make it to testing sites. To be able to be part of a group of people that can help this, this battle against the virus is an opportunity that I, I relish and I, I, I'm glad I can be a part of it. Most interaction that, that I have with the public uh, is, is very positive. There has been a lot of of struggles that I think everyone across the country has been going through lately, but I, I think that everyone really kind of understands that, that we're all in this together. I have a two and a half year old son and, and my wife. This has been a, a trialing time for, for our family, the same as any other family. So I, I relish the time that I can spend with them. We have a very close, tight community, uh, particularly here in Nova Scotia. There's a lot of close families, there's a lot of close friends, and I know that you know, across the country, if uh, we have particular um, issues that we're feeling here, I know that that's felt across the entire country. I'm very fortunate to be uh, part of Canada. Um, I'm very a proud Canadian, and I'm very uh, proud to be a paramedic for uh, this country for those reasons. I've never been part of a, such a large team, and whether that be someone that's in the paramedic role or someone that works at the grocery store or any other frontline worker, to have such a common goal across you know, all these different platforms and all these different uh, work environments, um, I think that's a pretty cool thing to be a part of. Happy Canada Day.
Hi, my name is John Zielinski, and I'm a bus driver for the beautiful city of Montreal. Hi, my name is Tatum Crane. I'm an operation chief for the city of Montreal, SDM. Well, the last few months uh, changed my job actually quite a bit. Uh, we have fewer uh, customers. At the height of the uh, pandemic, it was uh, pretty uh, worrying actually. Uh, people getting on the bus, uh, coughing, sneezing, and uh, it was a uh, pretty uh, unnerving uh, situation. I was working on uh, Friday Easter at night, and uh, I was all alone, only my bus drivers and uh, the police, the ambulance. Montreal is known as a city that moves a lot, and uh, it was completely dead, so I will always remember that night. The frontline workers also, uh, they need to get to work and uh, back home again. So uh, we're the frontline workers that bring the, the angels uh, back and forth. Hello, John. We have people to, to bring them to the hospital, bringing them to the grocery store. Some of them, they're homeless. Some of them, they're, uh, they just need to, uh, to get out of the house. So you have to be there, you know? People come up and see us and uh, they'd say thank you uh, for your service. And uh, uh, it's, uh, of course, it's a very nice pat on the back. What I've learned about Canadians uh, is that we do uh, pull together when it's uh, actually uh, the time. I'm very proud uh, to be a Canadian. The people of uh, Quebec and uh, Canada, we are strong people and respecting the rules and, you know, we're helping each other. And I saw that a lot of people, you know, helping each other and I, I think it's amazing so I was very proud of uh, who we are you know. I would like to wish all Canadians a very very happy Canada Day especially to my mom. Happy Canada Day mom. I love you very much. Happy Canada Day everyone. And hey, Canada, welcome back. Happy Canada Day indeed. We are broadcasting live from one in a, a chain of, of more than a dozen small islands just offshore of downtown Toronto. Beautiful day out here. Uh, we're not on Parliament Hill, but, but hey, this is just as good. And on this Canada Day, uh, we are celebrating Canadians who have been on the front lines of the pandemic. Have a look at this. Hi, my name is Martha Morin. I'm the Emergency Operations Center Director in Malaya, Saskatchewan. We initially just started with uh, trying to share information about COVID and um, distribute PPE. So when we did get our first case, our fears were realized, it started to spread fast. Then we started um, distributing cleaning kits and um, we started doing errands and then something really amazing happened. We started getting donations. It wasn't just groceries, it was uh, toys and activities for kids. We have so many great people in this community, people who step up in times of hardship. I love helping people. My hope for Canada is that we are able to, in time, truly reconcile with Indigenous people. My community understands what it feels like to feel less than other Canadians. I hope that someday in the future, my kids and their kids never have to feel that way. I would like to say Happy Canada Day to my mother, to my two boys, Ricky and Aaron, to my community of Lawash. We've been through a lot and every time we make it through and to the rest of Canada, Happy Canada Day. Now, there's one other thing that you should know about Martha, and it's this. My favorite Toronto Raptor is Fred Van Vliet. <laughs> number 23, thanks. <laughs> yeah, number 23, Fred Van Vliet. Well, Martha, uh, we got a message especially for you. Hey, Martha, Fred Van Vliet from the Toronto Raptors. Just want to thank you for all of your work during this period and wish you a happy Canada Day. Thank you. <laughs> now that's cool. Come on. That's, that's cool. We're going to have to make sure she gets a clip of that. Uh, okay, let's go to Winnipeg now where Cam McIntosh is standing by. Happy Canada Day, Cam. Happy Canada Day to you, Andrew. I'm standing here at the Forks, uh, the heart of Winnipeg. Here on a normal Canada Day, we would have thousands of people coming down to see 
artists, musicians, fireworks, of course, later on, none of that is happening. But people are still gathering here, and this has long been a traditional meeting place for thousands of years, long before European settlement. This is the homeland of the Métis. This is the heart of Treaty 1 territory as well. And that's why we've been asked Indigenous and Métis artist Val Vint to join us here today. And a question we're asking people today is, quite simply, what does it mean to you to be here in Canada, to be Canadian in 2020, in the face of everything we're facing right now? Well, there is no place else I'd rather be. Um, I think that uh, things in Canada are, are a little better in, than most places, and certainly there's still racism and misunderstanding, but I feel we're on a good path to healing all of that here. Well, one of the... One of the things when we talk about healing, you're responsible for this new sculpture here behind us. What is it called and what does it rep represent? It's called Education is the New Bison, uh, because there are no buffalo in North America. And uh, the, the bison represents uh, education. So when we educate ourselves, if you read the books and watch the videos um, that are on this bison, you'll, you'll get a truer picture of what our actual history has been. And it's not about being upset or angry about it. It's about recognizing, seeing the truth, and then moving forward to make changes in a good way. Excellent. Belle, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Andrew, Andrew, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Cam. Uh, now, our next guest has been speaking out about systemic racism for a long time, and Ashley Collingbull, no stranger to the spotlight either. She's found success weaving her culture with her career, born on the Enoch Cree Nation of Alberta. She's a former Miss Universe, now a professional model, and, and most recently featured in a new ad campaign for Nike as just one of three Indigenous women to represent the Nike 7 line, a collection inspired by Indigenous peoples. And Ashley joins us now. And, and hello, first of all, to you. And, and I have to tell you that, you know, one of the, the themes of our program today is, is people who have made outstanding contributions. And sometimes that's on the front lines, and sometimes that's on a medical context. And in other cases, and I think in your case, it's showing people what's, what's possible. I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts on, on having this opportunity, I guess, first of all, with, with Nike to represent them? It's an amazing opportunity, and it's such a powerful message because it's all Indigenous spaces for such a huge brand. And that's something that you rarely see, and that's something that we need is more Indigenous representation. So I'm extremely proud to be of something that is giving back to healing, giving back to Indigenous youth. So it's making a huge impact. You know, the, the way in which um, Canada is confronting the issue of systemic racism, and I think particularly of, of anti-black racism, that's something that, that as an Indigenous person, I mean, you, you have an empathy for. You have a deep understanding of that. But, but explain that for me. How, how does that change your perspective on things? Indigenous peoples have been fighting for years, fighting for what's right, fighting for their rights, for our treaties, for our land. And basically, we have been dealing with systematic racism for a long time, so I completely empathize with the Black Lives Matter movement. We're going through the exact same thing. So I stand in solidarity with that movement, and I believe that, you know, the only way we're going to really move forward is if people acknowledge the true history of Canada, where we came from, and then they'll understand and educate themselves on why we're saying what we're saying and why we're doing what we're doing. That's the only way we can move forward. Right. And, and so talk to me a little bit more about that. I mean, what is your hope for, for Canadians who are, who are taking a moment to, to reflect on the way and, and maybe even the reason we celebrate Canada Day? You know, I think it's really important for all Canadians to know the true history of Canada. You know, Indigenous peoples are the first peoples of this land. And how Canada came about, it's not necessarily a happy story. But I feel like all Canadians need to know the truth and need to know, you know, why we are the way we are. And if they are a proud Canadian, it's important for them to read the Truth and Reconciliation Report to see how they can make changes in their everyday lives to work together. It's important right now for non-Indigenous allies to use their voices to show up and use their power and privilege to help us. Because as human beings, we're all equal. And the only way that Canada is going to thrive is if we unite and grow together. 
Ashley Calling Bull, uh, thanks for, for taking the time to join us and sharing your thoughts. I appreciate that. All the best to you. Thanks. You too. Have a great day. You too. Okay, let's touch base now with two people who have uh, found a very, a very different artistic outlet to tackle such a, such a pressing problem as this. Daniel McCallum and Jackie Comrie are Toronto artists who are taking part today in, in painting a Black Lives Matter street mural in an iconic part of the city, mind you, uh, Kensington Market. Hello to the two of you. Happy Canada Day. Hi, everybody. Happy Canada Day. Happy Andrew. Canada Day. How you doing? All right, so, so explain for me the work the project on which you have embarked today, uh, what it is, what it's going to look like, and how you're involved. Cool. So, um, just first of off, it is Canada Day, so I just wanted to say, um, you know, we give acknowledgement to the First Peoples um, on this territory, and we stand in solidarity with them. Today, uh, as you can see, we're painting a Black Lives Matter mural um, in solidarity with the uh, the Black Lives Matter movement uh, internationally and globally. Yeah, I mean, it's, and, and it's what, all what about bringing awareness. To do this yeah, Yes, so it's it's all about bringing awareness uh, of uh, you know the the issues that are happening right now. A lot of people think that it's only a U.S. issue, and it's uh, it's truly it's happening here in Canada as much as it is in the U.S. It's it's a global issue, and we all have to we we have to uh, stand for injustices, for racial injustices and uh, systematic racism. Yes. Yeah. And so, what's the impact of something when you look behind you and you see what you folks have done so far? What do you think the impact of that will be? So, um, so we've just started. Again, it's 16 artists. It's all uh, it's black artists and all artists of color that have come together. So that alone for a mural, of course, is, is very powerful in Toronto and in Canada in terms of that statement. Um, but, you know, what we want to mm -hmm. kind of push forward and, and express is that, yeah, there's like Canada has a no tolerance, uh, no tolerance level for anti-black racism. Right. That's the impact. Right. You know, that uh, we're, Danny Lowe we're, and Jackie, kind of thank you so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, yeah, and, and, and thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to show us that work, and I know you guys are going to be working uh, for a big chunk of today to finish that. Really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks. Okay, let's check in again with Shana Luck, uh, who's standing by in Halifax. Hey, Shana. Hi, Andrew. Well, I'm here on the Halifax waterfront, and I'm uh, joined this afternoon by somebody who is helping this city celebrate Canada Day. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Jamila. She is performing as part of Halifax's virtual Canada Day concert tonight, and you, you're going. one of the songs is going to be a, a new single for you. You've just released. It's a very powerful single called Chant Their Names. I'm wondering if you can tell me about the significance of that song. Absolutely. First of all, let me just thank you, Shane and CBC, for having me. Chant Their Names came about as a, a, a response and an outcry against the police brutality that has been happening, not only now, but for a very long time. The, the difference is that now we have cell phones and everyone is videotaping it, and we can't look away. So Chant Their Names is reflecting reality in that way, and I'm, I'm really blessed to feel like a... a, a messenger for uh, a message so strong at this time in our lives yes and and that's going to be a, a virtual concert that's on tonight uh, i know you're you're going to be watching it tell yes. us a little bit about that how people can tune in oh absolutely so it's going to be on youtube and also streamed as well on on, on um east link um, so you can check in on that. If you go to the Halifax Civic Events page, you'll find the event, our Halifax Canada Day, and you can just share it from there or log in from there, yes. Well, thank you very much for telling us about it. Congratulations on the, the new song and the performance. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Andrew. Thanks so much, Shana. And now we will head to the other end of the country uh, in Vancouver where Lian Young is standing by. Hey, Lian. Hi, Andrew. So I am here at English Bay. Things are a little grayer here and a little cooler now, but I found somebody that is not afraid of this weather of, at all. In fact, I dragged him off the water while, where he was kayaking. This is Bernard Abelson. So, Bernard, what are you and your family doing for this Canada Day? So, as you mentioned, we're out kayaking, and if you look over my shoulder, the family's actually out there. Yep, so just we decided to take advantage of a beautiful day. Well, not really, but, yeah, Canada Day 
obviously a weekend or a weekday, the weekday break is always a nice thing. So just really out here, going to go for brunch later, getting together with a couple of ex-South Africans and just, just having a relaxing day. So you mentioned South Africans because that's where you immigrated Correct. here from 12 Correct. years ago. Why did you choose Canada? So interestingly, I always say Canada chose us. We happened to be uh, browsing an advert in the newspaper the one day back in South Africa, as I say, 12 years ago, and saw a Canadian company looking for engineers. I am an engineer. And uh, within a couple of days of arrival, thankfully, I was working. And we've been here ever since on a big family adventure. Family adventure continues 12 years later, and it's going to continue much more into the future. Yes, and time's very different now amid COVID. What's yes. it been like adjusting with the whole family here and, and learning what it means to become a Canadian? Yeah, it's really been great. You know, the, thankfully, we haven't been in full lockdown, so that's been very, very helpful. The fact that we've been able to get out and enjoy this pristine environment around us. I call this my playground now living in Yale Town recently, so just loving the freedom of being here. All right, that's a great reason to be here in Canada, just hanging out in nature's playground, a little cooler than usual, though. Uh, still not a bad one. Andrew, back to you. All right, Leanne, thanks so much. And of course, the lesson there, weather, just a state of mind, right? Well, easy for me to say. Uh, we'll be right back with a special message from the Rosebud Motel. First, though, watch this. My name is J.R. LeBlanc. I am an environmental cleaner in the uh, ICU unit as a extra COVID cleaner. So I basically am working Monday to Friday, 12 to 8. When I come to work, I go and get a cart together and I start to clean all touch surfaces, including handrails, as well as the, um, the sinks and the bathrooms and anything that people touch, as well as cleaning the rooms. We make sure that we take care of each other, the doctors, the nurses, as well as the cleaners. So I was actually quite confident that uh, I could go into there, but yes, I was nervous at first, for sure. My initial concerns were that I've never really been around the COVID virus, so I didn't know how to deal with it. I would say that the, it has definitely uh, changed me personally. I am a single dad of two boys, both 16 and 19 years old. When it was first began, I had to not see them for a little short little couple of weeks, and that was tough. Um, but uh, they also are working in grocery stores as well. I think we make a difference because we also sometimes interact with the patients as well. And I find that in the uh, unit when the family wasn't able to come in, it made a huge difference for, you know, just maybe they could hear us. My hope for Canada is to continue being the kind of people we are. We have a very diverse uh, society. Uh, we also have uh, wonderful hospital care. Uh, we're very lucky to have the health care system we have. I just hope that uh, Every one of us appreciates this wonderful country we're in. Happy Canada Day.
Hi, my name is Elsa Leon and I'm a nursing teacher and during this COVID pandemic I decided to come and help out in the long-term care facility in the West Island of Montreal, Quebec. I decided that I just couldn't help myself. I had to get out there and do what I could. After I volunteered, my brother was very vocal about, you know, sharing how he was proud of me. And then when his work became more quiet, he also decided to volunteer and we ended up getting stationed together. When it started to get clear that I had symptoms that could possibly be COVID, I just had this sinking feeling. Um, then when my results came back positive, I was devastated. Being worried about spreading it to my kids and my husband, that was very nerve wracking. Once those two weeks were gone and they did not get sick and I was able to leave the house, I just felt, you know, completely relieved and happy. It was incredibly difficult work, but incredibly rewarding and I wouldn't have it any other way. Happy Canada Day. And welcome back. Happy Canada Day indeed. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Toronto Islands. Lovely weather here too. Oh my gosh, the scenery here is, uh, is to die for and, and some of us out in in fuller force than, uh, than others. That's awesome, that's, that's really good. I like that umbrella. Okay, um, COVID-19. It has been a real learning experience, right? And, and, if, and few people, I think, have helped me uh, personally muddle my way through the, the epidemiological side of it as much as our next guest, Dr. Isaac Bogosh, uh, infectious diseases specialist. Hey, Dr. Bogosh, happy Canada Day to you. Happy Canada Day to you. <laughs> so, so, I mean, let's, let's talk about the coronavirus in the sense of like, where you think Canadians ought to feel about where we're at right now uh you know what it's a great day to celebrate because from coast to coast we've certainly got this infection under pretty good control in most of the country certainly in march things were pretty rough uh certainly we saw uh, our epidemic curves go up and thankfully with the hard work of truly everybody in the country adhering to some very difficult public health measures we were able to get this epidemic under control in the country it's okay to take a step back. It's okay to take a sigh of relief. It's okay to take a moment to acknowledge the challenges that we've had along the way and have a wonderful day to celebrate Canada Day in a responsible manner. But of course, we know sadly this epidemic isn't over. We know that we still have to be vigilant and, and that we still have to remind ourselves that this is here and if we let our guard down, it could come back. But it's Canada Day. I think we all enjoy ourselves responsibly and just take a moment to reflect how right. much sacrifice and how much effort we all had to do to get Canada to where it is now. Well, ce celebrate safely. That is such an important message and one that we heard from Dr. Bonnie Henry earlier today. I got to ask you just before I let you go, I mean, part of what today involves is, is casting forward and looking forward as well. Uh, vaccine in 2020, treatment in 2020, what do you think? Yeah, I really think that there's been some tremendous progress on the vaccine and treatment front. Certainly, we have two treatments uh, currently that we know work. It's dexamethasone and remdesivir. Dex and this is mostly for sick, hospitalized people. But we know that they both seem to work rather well. We have tremendous access to dexamethasone, less so with remdesivir. Uh, and from the vaccine standpoint, uh, there's been a, some very good progress on that front. Over 140 vaccine candidates that are under development. We have about 15 or 16 that are in human trials. We'll hear about the results of the first mm -hmm. big human trial probably sometime in July or August. All arrows are pointing in the right direction that we're going to have right. more and more options for treatment and hopefully some vaccines sooner rather than later. I don't want to be overly optimistic. Right. I know it's Canada right. Day, but in all fairness, <laughs> it right, wouldn't right. be outlandish if we had a vaccine available by late 2020. Good news, hopeful news. Dr. Isaac Bogosh, thank you so much. And happy Canada Day to you. Now, uh, one more frontline worker that we want you to meet, uh, someone who has really, really risen to an unexpected challenge. My name is Celine Stamper. I'm a lieutenant, a nursing officer with the Canadian Armed Forces. I've been working at long-term care centers in Montreal. 
I'm a new nurse. I graduated nursing school just last summer. So this is all new to me. I never thought that when I graduated last year, I'd be working in a pandemic, working at a long-term care center in Montreal, where I'm not from. It's really opened my eyes to nursing in general and the care that we give. And there was a lot of residents that we got to know. In particular, there was a, a couple who actually shared a room and they've been married for over 40 years and they were able to stay together in the room. They beat COVID and, and together, which was really amazing. When you think long-term care, sometimes you think more slow pace, but that's not the case at all. You could tell the staff was so appreciative that we were there. They, it kind of took a load off their shoulders. We were able to help out where we could. Going into a province where we didn't speak the language, like our, the team and I are all Anglophones, so we were worried that it would be difficult, but everyone was very, very welcoming and so appreciative. People on the street would stop us and thank us for what we were doing. So it's just the welcoming community of Canada. What's been motivating me through the pandemic is having my support of my spouse. My spouse is in Petawawa, so we FaceTime every few days. My dog always gets on the phone and he's wiggling his tail every time he hears my voice, which has been really cute. I also have the support of my team here. I don't think I could do it without the social support. To everyone, happy Canada Day. <laughs> and Canada, I'm sure, says happy Canada Day right back to you, uh, Celine. Celine, I know you're joining us from, from quarantine right now. You're, you're waiting those, those precious few more days to see your own family. Uh, but, but let me see what I can do to put a smile on your face, a bigger smile than the one you've got on right now. I understand, <laughs> beyond what we saw in the vignette, uh, one more thing about you, and that is that there is a particular show on CBC, no less, that, that you spent a lot of time watching. Which one is that? I spent a lot of time watching Schitt's Creek. <laughs> okay, watch this. Hey, Celine. Noah Reed here from Schitt's Creek. Just wanted to say thank you so much for everything you've been doing, obviously working with a very vulnerable population and thrown into the deep end uh, as, a, as a recent graduate and a, and a relatively new nurse. And I'm sure that uh, there's no real training that prepares you for you know, what you've been doing for the last little while and, and all of the PPE and the, the long days and the challenges of, of trying to help people in very difficult situations. Um, my partner's a, a nurse, a psych nurse, but uh, I remember from her days in nursing school that uh, geriatric can be a, a, a difficult, um, it can be a difficult and challenging population. It can be emotionally draining, it can be physically draining. Um, and I just wanted to say on behalf of everyone uh, on our show, Schitt's Creek, uh, thank you for everything that you've been doing. And uh, I, we're very happy to hear that, uh, that the show's been providing some kind of uh, relief. <laughs> and I'm sure you're ready to get back to your, uh, your partner and your dog and some sense of normalcy. So just wanted to reach out and say happy Canada Day and thank you so much. Well, mission accomplished. That's a smile, uh, Celine. That's got to make you feel good. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Happy Canada Day to you and all the best uh, to you and your family. Thank you so much, Celine Stamp, for Thank joining you. us uh, here on National TV. Now, b before we go, uh, yeah, Happy Canada Day. Before we go, uh, here's the Heritage Minister in an interview with CBC's Vashi Capellos with how Canadians can still participate in Canada Day festivities. This is about as different a Canada Day as I've ever experienced in my lifetime. I know that you would normally, in your role as minister, every year be up on Parliament Hill. I'd be up there covering it. Of course, that won't be the case this year. Tell me a bit about what the federal government is doing instead. Well, quickly we realized that we wouldn't be able to, to hold the Canada Day celebrations as we've had for, for, for many, many years. So we had to, to go to Plan B. Um, and, and Plan B will be very interesting, and, and perhaps even as interesting as, as the real thing, or as close to as we can get. Uh, we'll have uh, activities during the day. Um, we're inviting people to go to the Canada.ca website uh, to find out all sorts of activities that they can do. We have people from the, uh, who, are, who will be suggesting us uh, culinary experiences, um, uh, physical activities for, for the day of, and actually for, for the rest of the summer, why not? Uh, to discover a little bit more about, about our history, about the people like First Nations who, who, who helped shaped it. 
Uh, and we will have, obviously, celebrations uh, during, uh, during the evening with, with artists who will be contributing from coast to coast to coast to, to, to Canada Day in a different way than, than what we're used to, obviously. And so there you have it. On that note, that's it for us today. Uh, if you're watching us on CBC Television, the day does continue with a CBC Radio Canada entertainment special with Serena Ryder and P.Y. Lord. And, and look, we know this Canada Day has been very different from what you're used to. And we haven't forgotten, uh, you've been showing us how you're celebrating. So that's how we're going to close out the program. Happy Canada Day, Canada.